In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is there, Hi. <laughs> we have a very diverse community here at St. Innocent. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. We, of course, have uh, adult converts and those who were raised up in the faith as one metric. We have uh, Greeks, Serbians, Bulgarians, um, Russians, Ukrainians, uh, Ugandans, and uh, a few others. Of course, we have white and black people. We have, oh, I forgot, we have some Chinese people. We have educated people, and we have uneducated people. We have people who are more wealthy, of course, middle class, and we have some poor people. We have, I mean, we even have gingers here. <laughs> we have all those demographic things and yet at the same time we have no program we have no program that seeks any specific demographic or is uh, crafted in some way to grab on to uh, different age groups or or whatever it is that we would uh, that we would think of now these demographic numbers are very important within our culture, at least it seems so right now, um, as a way of quantifying, as a way of uh, categorizing. And it's unfortunate because it often divides people up and, and segments them. And in that segmentation, um, we become less personalized. Um, it's less about encountering you as a person than it is how you fit within a demographic makeup. But we should be proud that we are diverse. But this, of course, is how the gospel is. The gospel itself is after the apostles received the grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, they went out and they spread the message of the gospel. And we say the gospel is universal. Universal in the sense that every single culture can be transformed by the message of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, last week I preached a sermon on what the gospel is. You can listen to that and um, get a good outline of what we believe. But that very message went all over the world and it absolutely changed society. It was an entire, for some societies, well, for all societies, it was a full revolution in how human beings were treated and how society ran. And that gospel transformed people and as it did, it made saints. Today is the Feast of All Saints, and there have been saints and martyrs and every category of saints that you can think of ever since the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles, ever since that first martyr Stephen was stoned to death while the apostle Paul watched. And as the gospel has gone into every culture, it has transformed people so that we can say that it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're slave or free, white or black. It doesn't matter what demographic you come from. If you're old or, or elderly, or even if you're a child, the gospel has the ability for you to encounter it and for you to be transformed. And this should give us uh, great encouragement. 
This should give us great encouragement because we don't have to be super smart. We're allowed to be dumb. But we don't have to be dumb. We can also be smart. And if you take a moment to look around at the icons and to contemplate every personality, there's all sorts of vocations and lives that people served in. Some bishops, yes, a lot of bishops, a lot of priests, but also farmers, also um, just uh, people living a monastic life, also families, just a mother and a father, the most universal category of all. We have great ascetics and those who essentially on their deathbed converted, such as St. Constantine, Every category, every demographic you can imagine is encountered in the lives of the saints. And this is one of the reasons, as Christians, we're encouraged to read the lives of the saints. The Bible is inspirational. The Word of God can unite to our heart, and it can light a fire that fills us with grace, <clears throat> that educates us and trains us in the presence of God. The lives of the saints are a continuation of the scriptures where we can read their lives and encounter examples that are more familiar to us because oftentimes they're closer to us and we can find that same grace, that same connection, that same fire because we can see people like us gradually sanctified gradually transformed, the saints are our proof that the gospel is real, that it's not just another fantasy, that it's not just something that is relegated to the apostles and all those miracles that we can believe in in the Bible that we have no belief for now. The saints are our proof that the Holy Spirit works today. Now, we just happened to have an icon that was recently painted behind our altar of Archbishop Dimitri. We have pictures of Archbishop Dimitri consecrating this parish. I was uh, tonsured a reader and then eventually ordained a subdeacon by Archbishop Dimitri. Some of the people here had a, uh, a strong relationship with him. And so he's not an abstract person. He's not someone who is in a distant land far, far away that nobody knew. This is someone who walked amongst us. And my impression of him was a humble man. He was a scholar, of course, but you would never know it. And when you encountered him, you felt like you were near someone who was full of grace, someone who was full of humility, someone who loved you. He didn't glow in the dark, it's strange. I mean, I'm sure they tried. He didn't glow in the dark. He didn't lift up his hands and have flames coming from his fingertips, like that story in the, um, in the Desert Fathers. But in his humble service to the church, some were inspired enough to even want an icon of him as local people venerating him because we witness his love of God, because we connected to the gospel through him, through his example, not just his words, but his very presence. So sometimes we make sainthood abstract and big and uh, something of unobtainable. You're not meant to be a human flamethrower, maybe. Maybe you're not meant to be a miracle worker. Maybe you're not meant to be a holy elder guiding people as we like these famous examples. But in your faithfulness to the faith, in your gradual growing in the grace of God by pursuing Jesus Christ, in your gradual deepening of your relationship with God, that's all Archbishop Dimitri did. And we look at him and we found him to be holy. You will raise, if you're a parent, you'll raise holy kids just by pursuing God. As someone who doesn't have kids, 
Doesn't matter the demographic you are, by just deepening your relationship with God continually and progressively. Today is dedicated to all those saints that are known and those who are unknown. It is possible that we have a room full of unknown saints. But it's important for us to know that our part is to make Christ and his gospel the center of our lives, to take it seriously, and to continue to pursue him. May we be inspired by our, uh, the saints that surround us. May we be encouraged to read their lives so that we can find uh, encouragement and the flame of fire. Most importantly, may we dedicate ourselves to seeking the kingdom first so that all these graces and gifts can be added to us and so that someone might look back on us and say, I knew somebody and that somebody proved to me that that gospel is real. I experienced Christ through them. There's nothing better that could be said about anybody. May our God bless it to be so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Amen.